where the eyeball is located. It's really just coming right home to Wilmington, making its way slowly but surely right over our area. Right now we can see they are swaying back and forth uh, due to the heavy winds, due to the heavy rain. We can hear it and feel it inside our building. And, and if you can look over here to the power line to our left here, it is snapped from the top. It wasn't something that was taken from the ground, from the base of it. It was totally ripped off the top of the power pole there. We're seeing this widespread all over Wilmington this afternoon as we're still right now in the eye of Hurricane Florence. To do. Turn around, don't drown. If you end up in one of these pocket areas with your car and you're not able to proceed, here's the thing, emergency response may not even be able to get to you. Again, a tornado warning in effect until 1.45 um, a.m. At 1255 in the morning, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located over Silver Lake or near Wilmington, moving northwest at 30 miles per hour. Um, OK, guys, we um, we're going to have to stop coverage right now because yeah. we have got to get to our safe zone right now. So please take shelter and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. WWAY studio in Leland. We do have a confirmed tornado, though, as we're getting reports of that for you. For almost an hour, they were telling you guys about uh, certain areas you need to take cover, and then all of a sudden it became a situation that we were experiencing, and, you know, our news director came in and, and got us all out. Uh, we had to leave, just leave the studio, um, and then uh, when we came back uh, into the studio, we found um, lots of water coming in uh, behind the desk, so that is why we are on the couch and why the lighting is a little off, uh, but we, of course, are trying. Here's a look at our studio. Uh, you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, everyone is helping all of our engineers, uh, our production assistants. Everyone is kind of pitching in uh, to make this uh, still happen. Uh, we wanted to give the meteorologists a break because, of course, they've been talking uh, for almost an hour now about all of these tornado warnings. Mm -hmm. This looks like that tornado um, risk, and uh, we might potentially have some we can hear potentially. Okay. okay. All right. We got to so. go. All right, we're on. We're you know, and our news director posted something last night on Facebook. Uh, we did 83.5 hours mm -hmm. of nonstop coverage um, on this storm, and it doesn't stop here. Nope. We still have a lot to get to. So, of course, many of you are not just worried about jobs. Many are still wondering where you'll live or where your next meal will come from. So far, there are still many more questions than answers. WWAY's Kylie Jones is live in Wilmington with what she found out from the governor. Kali, what did Cooper say about recovery efforts? Randy, Governor Cooper said this is going to be a long process with hotels still filled with relief workers and many apartment complexes just like this one evicting residents because of storm damage. Neither Cooper nor FEMA really have any solid answers on where these people are going to live in the short term. This is going to be a significant challenge across the state and we're working as hard as we can to help provide places for people. But countless people are still crying out for help. Governor Roy Cooper visited downtown Wilmington today. He says there are still emergency shelters operating if you need somewhere to go. He also says a lot of people have absolutely nothing right now. And that's where FEMA comes in. Already we've had nearly 100,000 North Carolinians who have registered with FEMA for assistance. We have already approved over $50 million dollars for a lot of those individuals to get them the next step in recovery. FEMA Federal Coordinating Officer Albie Lewis says the agency could bring in trailers and other temporary housing, but he does not know how soon that will happen. But people need help now. That was the message Robert Babson, a resident of the flooded out Cross Creek neighborhood in Hampstead, had for the governor Thursday. Help us, help my volunteers, help my neighbors, help my family. We got three little girls. They don't have a home to go to no more. Um, we, 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 he's our leader. He's, uh, he's North Carolina's commander in chief. Um, help us. Be, be the man that you were meant to be, the leader. I take that to heart. I know I've got a big job ahead. I know we've got to pull together. I'm going to be with the people of North Carolina for the long haul. Cooper says the General Assembly will meet next week to try to unlock short-term emergency funds. He says the state needs to use every resource available, but he will not stop until each person has a roof over their head. But it may take a while. Hurricane Florence caused $140 million in damage at UNCW alone. Early reports have listed damage at $75 million, but it's actually nearly doubled that. 
That estimate also includes cleanup costs. There's another five to six million in damage at other state institutions, bringing Florence's total impact to those state universities to up to nearly 150 million. UC Wilmington is set to resume classes Monday. The university has also canceled fall break and reading day to make up for any instructional time missed due to the storm. Layton County residents are just starting the cleanup process. The town of Kelly is one of the hardest hit in our area. The tiny town suffered from flooding and destroyed homes and some of the main roads in the town were completely washed out with residents unable to even get to a grocery store. Cleanup crews have been out cleaning up debris and repairing roadways. The process is estimated to take months and perhaps even a year. As one Brunswick County neighborhood recovers from Hurricane Florence, they now have something else to worry about. Potential flooding from a new proposed development. WWAY's Matt Bennett joins us now from Stony Creek with more on the development and neighbor concerns. Matt? Randy, the proposed development would back up to this cul-de-sac behind me, where some residents are now staying in campers in their driveways because Hurricane Florence flooded their homes. Right now, looking at that, you can't convince me that that's not going to impact our area. Karen Gawin and her husband built their house in Stony Creek Plantation back in 2002. After seeing their home nearly destroyed during Hurricane Florence, they're worried a proposed development could make the problem even worse. We're concerned that all of those buildings, the parking areas, and so on and so forth are taking up even more of the soil that we don't have in this area and will lead to further flooding. Jennifer Benson has lived in this neighborhood since 2011. Her concern is not only for her fellow neighbors, but also future residents of the proposed development. Well, I went through all of the town documents trying to find what the developer is planning to do to mitigate future flooding to the future residents. And there's no mention of it being in the floodplain. Plans show that the proposed buildings would sit only a few feet away from the flood zone. The developer, Blue Ridge LLC, submitted an application to be annexed into the town of Leland. If approved, the developer would receive $100,000 when construction is completed and sewer service from the town of Leland. The town expects to receive about $80,000 in taxes per year from the development if the deal goes through. Last week, we told you the story of some residents forced to leave Wilmington's Gervais Apartments. The property owner says they had extensive water damage after Florence. Property manager Brindella Blanks told WWAY that all families needed to vacate. However, after reassessing the property, turns out only 41 families need to leave. Blanks estimates the repairs will take three to six months. A FEMA spokeswoman says finding temporary housing options in Wilmington remains a challenge. One resident of Gervais says she can only afford to move in with family. Some rents for a one bedroom start at $900. And so um, they're giving people like with maybe a one bedroom seven. Um, and some people can't afford to pay the difference. But if you have a bad credit score or you like we come from low income, some people may not be able to afford that. Some residents say this is not an enjoyable way to go into the holiday season. The property manager says she wants to get those residents back home as soon as possible. With Thanksgiving just around the corner, one of the most famous athletes in the world made a stop in his hometown of Wilmington today to give back to his community. It's our big story at 6. Laney High School grad, six-time NBA champ, UNC alum, and the current owner of the Charlotte Hornets, Michael Jordan, surprised Wilmington today, making a stop at Lowe's Home Improvement to hand out meals to people still recovering from Hurricane Florence. It didn't stop there. The five-time MVP visited the Community Boys and Girls Club where he talked with the children there and handed out more than 50 pairs of free Jordan shoes. He says it's the least he can do for an organization that means so much to him. All the games and the competitive nature that we had in these buildings, in this building, helped me determine, you know, my, my my determination and helped me excel as a basketball player. So, I mean, I would hope that the kids would have the same opportunities, and uh, that's all we can provide. You know, that's what I'm going to try to do. Lowe's Home Improvement also gave a donation of $100,000 that will go to the Boys and Girls Club to help them repair in the aftermath of Florence. When Jordan stopped at Lowe's, it was a big surprise for those who were there to pick up a Thanksgiving meal. Lowe's Home Improvements prepared a thousand meals to be given out at several stores today. Jordan's appearance shocked those who were in line, many 
who had their lives completely changed by Florence. We heard from one man who says it was a wonderful way to start the holiday season. I came out because uh, I'm, I'm one of the victims that were here in Wilmington, so it's, it was a, a trying experience, but I wouldn't like to go through it again. But I'm glad that everybody's out there and having Michael Jordan to uh, support, and it's all good. Lowe's gave out turkeys at several locations, including Surf City and Whiteville. It has been 179 days since Hurricane Florence struck the Carolina coast. Almost six months later, businesses and families are still struggling to recover. WWAY's Monique Robinson joins us with the Pender County Schools update. More than 800 students are still displaced, living in temporary sites and places. But Pender County Superintendent Stephen Hill says his top priority is not letting that setback impact their education. Category one wasn't supposed to be this extreme, but when it stays as long as it does and it blows as long as it does, this is an event like never seen before in history here. Pender County School Superintendent Dr. Stephen Hill says it could take years for the schools to get back to 100%. From mold remediation to mildew remediation, the first step to recovery cost around $8 million, but completing all these repairs could add millions more. I still live in a house that hasn't been touched. I have no, I don't, I have no uh, cushion under my carpet. I have walls that are peeling, you know, so the school system is just a larger piece of that puzzle for the whole community. I mean, this is something we're going to deal with for years. Months later, more than 860 students are still living in trailers and other temporary spaces. And 15 out of 18 schools in the county still have damage. It's all about trying to get the project prioritized, which is basically, you know, what's the most important. And obviously that's roof work. I mean, you got to protect it before you build the insides back in. So the concept there is finding those contractors. But Hill says the whole community has come together. During the holidays when families couldn't afford to celebrate, the schools stepped up. We had to actually assign somebody as a full-time job to do nothing more than to actually supervise the program of giving out presents to almost 800 families. The schools are currently in the process of applying for FEMA reimbursements. Dr. Hill says the remaining repairs could cost about two million more dollars. During Annie. Hurricane Florence, the Salvation Army shelter in downtown Wilmington suffered extensive damage, but now seven months later, it's slated to reopen next week. The Red Shield Emergency Shelter at 820 North 2nd Street suffered massive roof damage during the storm in September. The damage caused the Salvation Army to temporarily close the shelter until repairs could be completed. On May 20th, next Monday, the Red Shield Shelter will once again open its doors. The downtown shelter reopening offers a temporary solution as the Salvation Army moves forward on the Center of Hope project, which will move services to North 30th Street.